Well, I'm Thomas Mahler. I'm the game director here at uh, Moon Studios and I'm directing Orient the Blind Forest. Well, I mean, I'm generally right now, I'm reviewing a lot of what people are doing because we're kind of like winding down and we're polishing the game and so on. So I'm just reviewing things, I'm playing through the game. Um, initially, I also wrote a story, I designed a lot of the levels and I'm generally coordinating the team and making sure that, you know, everything's he heading into the right direction. Well, that's a good question. I don't think there's a... That's really the term is properly defined right now. I would say we're independent simply because we are a couple of people spread across the world making a game from our from our living rooms. So to me that's as independent as it could be. Well initially when we started it, um, we were just inspired by you know games from the 8 and 16-bit era. Um, and we wanted for people to have that feeling again, like when you sat down on your you know, NES and played games like that. And there were a lot of inspirations, you know, I mean, we were directly inspired by things like Zelda um, or Metroid. Um, but at the same time, um, there was also movie in inspirations, right? Like, you know, Lion King and so on. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's basically where that inspiration came from. Well, I guess both games um, are 2D platformers in 2014, right? So, I mean, both use painted assets. I would say the difference between what we're doing and what Rayman is doing is definitely we are trying to make the game as pixel perfect as possible. I think there are two ways of how you can actually create a platformer. One is, one is the kind of like the diagonal uh, tile asset thing where it's like, hey, you don't know, maybe like you don't know exactly where you're going to land, but in Ori, we just wanted to make a really beautiful game, but also make sure that the player always knows at any point which pixel he's gonna land on. And yeah, just that precision was super important to us. Well, I mean, at E3, we've kind of like shown the basic gameplay, right? We've shown the start of the game and we heard a couple of voices of people like, hey, basically saying, hey, show us, show us more advanced gameplay, show us gameplay that's further ahead, right? So at Gamescom this year, we really wanted to focus on Let's show something that is further ahead. Let's show an bit like one of the cool abilities that we have in the game, um, which is the bash ability. That's kind of like what you've been referencing, the ability where you can bash from enemy to enemy. Um, yeah, and let's like let's throw people into that and see what they think when they actually play a further stage in the game. And you know, so far it looks really good and people seem to enjoy it. Um, yeah, I mean the reception right now is really phenomenal, it's really fantastic, it was great at E3 already to kind of like see how people react to it. There's more to come though, there's more that we're going to share um, in terms of the actual story of the game and in terms of like the abilities and so on, so yeah, it's, it's fantastic to see how people react to it. Well, I hope Ori is definitely a game that everybody can enjoy, you know, but I, we, we've just seen a gap in this industry, in the market, right? There, uh, I think when people, like, I think there are a lot of people who grew up playing these 8 and 16-bit games and we haven't seen games like that for some time now and we wanted to give people that feeling again and I think it should be, you know, a game that everybody can enjoy. It's a 2D platformer, it's, it has that kind of like exploration style of gameplay. Um, yeah, and just we crafted it for four years and we try to make it perfect and so we just hope people in are gonna see that and enjoy it.